Hi folks, so in this questions, or sorry, in this topic, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be covering the area of circles and specifically short answer questions that can often come up in a junior cycle graphics exam, okay? So the question, the first one we're going to focus on, there's going to be four questions overall in this video. It says the graphic shows uh, the design of a door mirror for a car. You can see we've got a 3D pictorial of it here, and we obviously have the 2D line diagram of it here when we're obviously looking in the direction of this arrow, okay? So what we have to do then is the center for the arcs are shown also. So we're given all the centers. We've obviously got one, two, three, four, five arcs. And then it says show clearly all points of contact. So what is a point of contact? Now I'm going to demonstrate what it is here. So if you imagine there's a circle here, obviously we only have a portion of a circle, which is called an arc. But that circle will kind of continue on there. I'd have another one here, another one here. I've obviously got one here for a center of this one here. Then I have an arc here at the top where the center is down here. If I was just to draw in using this center point here, you don't have to do this, but this is just for demonstration purposes. If I was to put in as best I can without slipping. Is there no? It's just a little bit tedious when you're working with a biro. So there we go. If I was to put in that circle right there, what I want to do is I want to identify any points of contact. So, as I said previously, we'd have a circle here. The points of contact between the two circles is when the centers are connected between them. So if I join the center to the center, where they cross over each other, will identify to me a point of contact. So that's one point of contact. Have I got any other ones that I can locate? Yes, if I connect the center of this circle to the arc of this one, I can locate another point of contact right here. Okay. Can I find any other ones? Well, yes. I can recognize here that I've got a circle here and I've got a straight line. Now, this line touching the circle will be a tangent line. So if I connect the two centers down like this, that there right there in the end is a point of contact for a tangent. And the same principle would apply over here for this one. This slide and set squares there, straight line down. I can identify another one. So I've actually found one, two, three, four so far. However, there is also another arc up here that is touching this circle and this circle, and it's got an arc outside there. The center point for that large arc is down here. So if I connect the center from this one to the center of this one and connect it through, that will identify to me another point of contact. And if I do the same thing with this one on the opposite side and connect it on and extend it, that once again will identify to me another point of contact okay so that's the principle there of circles in contact externally and internally with one another okay and we use the principle then of wherever you connect the two centers that will show you when you connect the two centers where the points of contact are and altogether we had one two three four five six points of contact okay so that's that first question completed i'm going to bring you up now to the second question i'm just going to move it up on the sheet here <clears throat> now in this question kind of don't like it because the wording is a little bit kind of funny but it says here the 3d graphic shows a plate rack also shown is an elevation of the plate rack and a plate so we've got a 3d graphic over here and essentially we're given obviously the elevation of a plate here that i'm assuming we're going to have to put in inside in the 3d rack or sorry the 2d rack here so that rack it's like we're after kind of drawing it from this angle over here where we've got the circle the circle and then the u-shaped part here and the plate has to fit inside there and be in contact with these two circles okay so first of all what we're going to have to do here it says draw the plate in the position of the plate rack show all construction and uh, points of contact so first of all we have a radius for the circle here from the plate which i can actually just take straight from here that's the radius i can take from the plate okay so that's really helpful to me that radius there i'm going to keep it on the compass and i have it set there like that now What's important to note is that plate has to be in contact with this circle and this circle. So what I'm going to do is from this circle here, you can see it's kind of in line with this point line here. I'm going to extend that line up. I'm going to do the exact same on the opposite side. Now there is other ways you could go about this. I'll explain in a second. I'm going to do the exact same on the opposite side. The radius for the plate that I've taken here. I'm going to mark it from the top of the circle 
you can see they're not the center from the top because I'm adding that radius on because I only want it to touch the outside of the plate. So that radius there, I'm after adding it on. I'm also going to do the exact same with the opposite side. Okay, now I'm going to put my compass back on the center point of this circle, but extend the radius out to here, out to the height of it. And I'm going to swing an arc inside there like that. It should be the exact same on the opposite side, and as you can see, it is. Now where those two arcs cross one another, he's identifying to me the center point for my plate. Now it's very important to note that the radius that I swung there is a larger radius than the radius of the plate, as you can see there. But what I did was I added the radius of the plate, this radius here, I added the radius of the plate onto the circumference of the circle, so I added it on. Now I'm going to take that radius from the plate, right about there, and now with my center point, that should give me a plate, just putting it in there as best I can, I'm happy with that. I'm drawing that circle now for the plate to represent the plate. As heavy as best I can. So that there is identifying to me the plate. I might as well, while I'm at it, get the inside ridge. I'm not going to heavy this one in as much. I'll put it in just for neatness drawing purposes. Okay, you would not have to put that bit in. But there we did uh, the question. Okay, so to identify then the points of contact, I would connect the center of the plate to the center of obviously the plate rack, which is there and here on the opposite side. And where the two circle centers connect right here is a point of contact and right here. Now where people might make a mistake on this question is they would take the radius from the plate take that radius and instead of adding it on up here like I did they might have just swung an arc inside here okay and what would actually happen there is their center would be further down and then the actual points of contact would not happen because the actual plate would be going through the center so it's very important there we have to add on the radius onto these circles here so I used the vertical line here that was already given to me in line with the center to add on the radius and I did the same with the other side Okay. Another way we could have done it was, having done the vertical line and done one arc, I could have bisected this line okay, and got a line going up through that, and that would have given me a center as well. Okay. So that's the second question done there, guys. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to a third question here. So I'm just going to take this sheet off. So once again, a couple of short questions in regards to circles and circles in contact. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do this question here. Just going to Zoom out a little bit there so you can see it a bit better. There we go. <clears throat> Just tape that down. So it says for this question, the image across shows a golf ball sitting on a tee. So we can see the golf ball here sitting on the tee and the tee is obviously dug into the ground. Um, shown below is an elevation of a similar golf ball and tee. So we've got the golf ball here. This line here, I assume, is representing the ground and the T is stuck into the ground. Okay. Complete the elevation below by drawing the golf ball sitting on the golf tee so that the golf ball is in contact with the points P and Q. Point P, point Q. Show all constructions clearly. Okay. So this is very similar to the last question, only that uh, we don't have to add on any radiuses. So we're given the radius of the golf ball. It's already here. So I'm going to take the radius of the golf ball right there, like that on my compass. And from P, the radius for the center, if you take, imagine the center here, somewhere up here in this little graphic there, if that's the center there, the distance to here to P has to be the same as the distance from P to the center. So now that that's the center point, when I have the radius here, I can go to P or Q, I'm gonna start with Q actually, I'm gonna swing an arc, and then with the same radius, go to P and swing an arc. Where the two arcs cross each other is the center point of my golf ball that is going to be a circle that will go through both P and Q. We're using this now. Should. There we go. Happy with that. So, really easy question. But it's just understanding it. And there is our 
golf ball sitting in P and Q, in contact with P and Q. Now, obviously, we know that the golf ball will probably go down inside of that because it has to sit in there. Okay, so there's obviously a little hollow portion there. So that's the third question there, guys, based on the circles and contact topic. Now we're going to move on to the last question, and I've left, I suppose, what I think is the most difficult one for the end. So, last question is this one here. Let's tape this down once again. So, for this last question, it says, the incomplete elevation of a lounger chair is shown. Okay, a 3D graphic of the chair is also shown. So we're given this uh, 2D elevation drawing and we're given a 3D representation over here. And I assume essentially what we're drawing is looking in the direction of the arrow here, where we're given this outline is what we're going to see. Because you can see that portion there, that there, that point there would be A. I've obviously got B somewhere in here and then C will be over here. So A to B to C. And you can see the curves that we're going to get. And then it says the arc BC has a radius of 35 millimeters. So the arc that's going to be going here is a radius of 35 millimeters. And then it says, uh, and is also tangential, sorry, to the arc AB. And they've given us the arc AB. Show the point of contact between the arcs. Okay, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to complete this and locate the points of contact. Now, in regards to the arc BC, what I'm going to do, oh, sorry, not BC, AB, I want to just extend it on ever so lightly. Doesn't matter. Just lightly like that. So that's the arc, okay, of a circle that would be going like this. Now, they do tell us that the arc BC has a radius of 35 millimeters. So, because that arc is going to be going in this direction, like this, and connected onto BC, what we have to recognize is that the center point is somewhere down here. So, first of all, from C, I'm going to get 35 on my compass. So, using my set square, I'm going to set the distance out to 35 millimeters. I'm just bring it up so you can see it a little bit better there. From zero, out as far as 35, like that. Now that I've done that, I know that the center point for that arc has to be 35 millimeters away from C. So somewhere along this arc that I've just done there, somewhere along that arc, which is 35 millimeters away from C, is going to be the center point. However, I don't know exactly where along that arc that is. So how would I actually find that? This is similar to kind of the plate rack question. What we're going to do is, from the center point of the arc AB, I'm going to do a vertical line down. It doesn't really matter as long as it goes through the arc AB. And that line that I'm after doing down there, I'm now going to add on where that line cuts through circumference. I'm now going to add on 35. So that arc length there of 35, I've now added it on. Because the center point for the circle here that's in contact with the arc AB is going to be this radius plus 35. Now that I have that distance there, down to here, I'm going to get my compass. I'm going to extend my arc using that center point and extend the radius length out to here. I'm going to swing an arc like this. And there we go. Where that arc cuts through has helped me identify a center point for my arc BC, which I'm now going to draw in. So I'm going to set the radius length once again back to C. And what I would always do just always confirm it there like that. Yep, happy with that. And as you can see there, that's 35 on our compass. And there we go. We're after drawing that in. Now, the last little bit, it will always tell you, show the points of contact between the arcs. So to find the points of contact, I would connect the center from the arc BC to the center from the arc AB. Line through like this. And there we have it. That there is my point of contact, okay? Sometimes noted with a P-O-C, okay? So that there, guys, was four questions based on the topic of circles and circles in contact and locating their points of contact and obviously tangents as well, obviously in a previous video. So that's that one done there, guys. I hope you found that helpful.